Have you ever wanted to take images of the night sky like those you see around social media and space websites but really don't know where to start or what to buy? As an astrophotographer I'm constantly asked what should I buy to get started in the hobby and how much money do I need? In this video I'm going to show you that many people already have the basic tools to get started taking pictures of the night sky and with the addition of a free piece of software you can have fun learning the basics of astrophotography all without breaking the bank. I'm also giving you my top tips to get going in this exciting hobby of astro imaging. So let's get into the details. Hey, welcome to the show from a slightly stormy evening here in New Zealand. My name's Simon and you're watching Astroworks, your friendly guide to the world of astronomy, where you can get lots of hints, tricks and tips to get you started in this amazing hobby. When people think about the hobby of astrophotography, they start to think of the kind of setup behind me. An expensive telescope mount, a large telescope, and an even more expensive camera. And this is what many people's first concepts of what an astro-imaging rig might look like. This might be true for more seasoned images, but for a newcomer to astrophotography, this can be a daunting prospect. Both from a technical perspective, but also a financial one too. This might even put you off from even trying the hobby. But with modern technology, many of us are actually carrying a very capable astrophotography rig right here in our pockets. Of course, by now you've probably guessed I'm talking about mobile phones, and the latest mobile phones are pretty impressive bits of technology. You might also be surprised at how much technology they share with a full-blown astro imaging camera too. Take this Samsung S22 Ultra for example. It's got an incredibly good lens system, capable of dragging in as much light as it can. It's got a high performance low noise sensor capable of taking crisp images in very low light and some impressive software processing tools to create an imaging platform that is very capable at dark sky imaging. These phone cameras really have closed the gap between a mobile phone and full-blown astrophotography cameras. Now you could just take this camera out and point it at the night sky and use the regular stock setting to take pictures, but recently Samsung quietly updated a relatively unknown piece of software to support astro imaging, and it really is quite clever. It's also available as a free download too. Before we get into the details, we'd like to remind viewers that if you'd like to know more about astrophotography and astronomy in general, then hit that like and subscribe button. The AstroWorks YouTube channel and website is dedicated to arming you with the information to help guide you in the fun hobby. Uh, check out our tips, tricks and beginners guides to help you get started and we'll also help you grow your knowledge about this fun hobby. One of the key selling points for the premium Samsung S series phones is the ability to capture raw images, a uh, mode usually only found on full-blown DSLR or mirrorless cameras. Raw images are ones that have not been subject to any processing or conversion to another format such as JPEG. Raw format is targeted at more experienced photographers and allows a much deeper level of control. They provide a wider dynamic range for more detail and images, but also gives you huge editing potential. So how do I get access to RAW modes on these phones? To access and use RAW files on your S-series phone, you'll want to download and install Samsung's Expert RAW app from the Galaxy App Store. It's free download, but to use it you'll need a compatible phone from the list of devices. And it's worth noting that you won't find Expert RAW on the Google Play Store or third-party app stores. You will need to download it from the Galaxy Store, so head over there and create an account to get Expert RAW, but it is a free download. Once downloaded and installed, the app gives you full manual camera controls compared to Samsung's pre-installed smartphone camera app, and it does provide better control of ISO, shutter speed, exposure compensation, and white balance. These will help you find that perfect exposure for nighttime use. The app also allows you much more control over daytime photography too. What's more interesting for this tutorial is the addition of an astrophotography mode to help you start on your nighttime imaging journey. Astrophoto is a new feature available in the Expert RAW app that can help users capture stunning photos of the stars. And Samsung explains the feature uses advanced AI segmentation technology and multi-frame processing to capture images of the stars over a set period of time. <coughs> What does that mean? Well, in a nutshell, it means that the app will take multiple photos over a set period of time and then realign these to create a single image. This means instead of you taking a single image of, say, 10 seconds, you're collecting multiple frames over a much longer period, maybe 10 minutes or so. 
Normally this would be an issue as our sky is constantly rotating above us, but the software overcomes this and that's where that software processing comes in. The app also features a few extra tools for astro images. Users can turn on a neat little sky guide as well to help you find your way in the night sky. This overlays layouts of constellations so that you can align the camera on the sky behind you. As you move the camera around, it uses the phone's inbuilt sensors to show where you're pointing. It's a pretty broad view of the sky and not super accurate, but the lens on the phone is pretty wide anyway, so that's not really too much of an issue. I do have more accurate ways of finding your way around the sky too, which I'll cover off in my top tips, so stay tuned for that. In astrophoto mode, you can also control the normal manual controls as well as new controls for as long as you'd like to expose, which can be up to 10 minutes. It's worth noting that long exposure imaging at night works best when there's little or no moon. If you try and image the Milky Way on a moonlit night, you'll find the image flooded with light and little detail of the Milky Way visible. So you do need to plan your imaging nights to coincide with times when the moon is either set at your location when you want to image, or at a phase where it's less than 30% illuminated. There are a few websites dedicated to this, and I find the timeanddate.com website great in helping plan the best times to image. Of course, you'll also want to be able to see the skies as clouds will really spoil your evening's imaging. Trust me, I know only too well. You'll become very familiar with the best local source for weather data in your country, and you'll find yourself glued to a variety of weather resources to find out how the night's weather might turn out. Welcome to the world of astrophotography. You'll become an expert in low light imaging and weather forecasting all in one hobby. Another item you want to think about is how you intend to mount the camera. If you're imaging for up to 10 minutes long, then you're not going to be able to hold the camera steady for that long. You are going to want to put that camera on some kind of support. Now, initially that could be as simple as a kid's beam back on the car roof or a fence post. But as you get more into the hobby, you might want to pick up a small tabletop tripod or a phone adapter that you can fit to a normal camera tripod. I use the small rig phone adapter that allows me to do both. Supporting the camera for long periods of time without movement is a key trick to getting better images. You'll also want to ensure that you're not imaging in strong winds for the same reason. While we're on the topic of how to image, it's worth looking at some of the tips for where to image from. Now, if you live in the country or more rural area, then you're well on the way to finding a good location. But if you live in the middle of a city, then multi-minute exposures will be problematic. Light pollution will swamp the camera in a matter of seconds if you live in the middle of a city, so try and get into an area that has much lower light pollution, but don't let that stop you from trying. If you can find a shelter spot in a park away from strong lights, you'll get a chance to capture something. One last thing, you will want to think about your own well-being too. Imaging under a dark sky in the middle of winter can be pretty cold in some parts of the world, so make sure you wrap up warm. Wear multiple layers of clothes, good footwear, and a nice warm hat. Heat disappears from the body quickly through the head and the feet, and there is nothing worse than having cold feet in the head while imaging, so put some planning into staying warm as being cold is pretty miserable and won't help you with that interesting new hobby. Of course, where you are, it might not be that cold, so let's just say dress appropriately for the conditions you are imaging from, and do be safe. If you're planning to image from a remote location, then also ensure you let others know where you're going and what time you'll be back. Maybe take a friend along and share the night sky together. It's kind of romantic too, so maybe drag your partner along, but do make sure you're safe at all times. We don't need to worry about hazards like bears here in New Zealand or snakes, but some might have to consider that. I was going to say make sure you take a mobile phone with you, in, but in this case it goes without saying. So now we have everything in place to image. To use the app, set up the camera and open the app. Choose astrophoto mode and then choose to turn on the sky guide if you want to know where you're pointing. And then choose the duration. You can choose for 7 or 10 minutes long. Touch the shutter button gently and the camera will start collecting a series of images and stacking these in camera. It'll align the stars and process the image to give you the best results. Don't forget to not touch the camera during this time, else you'll blur the stacked images. Another top tip is if you have an S22 Ultra, you can assign the button on the S Pen to trigger the shutter. You can do this by going into Settings and Advanced Features. Choose S Pen, Air Actions, and then you can add the Expert RAW app to the actions for individual apps. From here, you can choose to take a picture with a single or double press of the S Pen button. That will save you nudging the phone when pressing the Exposure button on screen. At the end of the imaging run, the app will stack and create the RAW image, which you can then save, copy or edit further on another app or off the phone using Photoshop, Lightroom or any of your favourite photo editing app. So how well does it work? 
well, pretty good actually for a mobile phone camera and a free app. It's possible with a bit of practice to turn in some pretty good images. If you're careful in choosing your location, imaging night and times, then you can maximize the details that you can capture. Save these images onto a PC and you can edit them as well for adding further detail. And while this app isn't capable as a full-blown astro rig like behind me, it's cheap, it's simple to use and a great introduction to astrophotography that isn't going to break the bank. I hope you'll download the app if you have one of these phones and give it a try, it's a lot of fun. Now as I said I'd give you some tips to help your imaging, so here's my top tip. First install the app and test it in the daylight before heading out. Don't wait till it's dark and in a remote location to try it all out for the first time. Do it up front and make sure you can find your way around the app at home in the daylight. Buy a cheap phone holder, mini tripod or adapter for a photo tripod you may already own. Having the phone stable during long exposures is key. Set up that S Pen shutter as well if you can. This will help you avoid touching the phone and blurring the images. Plan ahead of time, look for a moonless night and try and get one that's cloud free. This will give you the best conditions to image with. Choose a good location, the less light the better. If you live in a city, find a park or somewhere sheltered and away from direct lights. Even a fence or wall providing some shadow will help. Dress appropriately for the conditions. There's nothing more off-putting to a new hobby than trying to take pictures when your feet or head are freezing cold and you can't feel your fingers. If it's a hot climate, think about dress and do take some water. Do remember to be safe. Let someone know where you're going and when you're going to be back. Really important if you're going alone. Better still, take a friend along and image together and share the night sky. Make sure you're fully prepared before leaving. Ensure your batteries charge on the phone and think about taking a USB charge pack with you. Choose brighter objects to start with. The Milky Way Arc or targets like the Orion Nebula are good and bright to start with. They'll maximize your chances of getting a decent images out of the blocks. And remember, be patient. It takes time to learn, but is extremely rewarding. Think baby steps. Look to learn small increments to your imaging and know that, that it takes time. This is definitely not an instant gratification hobby. Do look for other tools like Stellarium, Sky Safari and planning tools like Photo Pills to help you find and frame your images. All these will help your planning and image capture and I've included some links in the description below as well. Of course our best advice is to hit that subscribe button right now and find tips and ideas to help you grow your knowledge and let us guide you on your way into this fabulous hobby. I should warn you though, it's extremely addictive. And above all, have fun. Remember this is a hobby where you'll make small and incremental steps to gain experience and improve your images as you go. Start with gaining some basic knowledge by subscribing to channels like Astroworks and then you can follow along gaining more knowledge and experience as you go. And then at some point you will be most definitely wanting to look at something like this. A step up and your own imaging telescopes and cameras are just round the corner. And of course, we'll be right there to help. As always, we wish you clear skies, although maybe not quite at this moment. And until next time, I'm Simon. Thanks for watching AstroWorks.